far, far away from the trees that carried the scent of Frangipani, lurked a strange, dark presence, a ghost of sorts. It looked back at me often, crow-like, ghost-like, telling me I would not see that green again through all the blue. I may never see the green again. My film Lumen is a semi-fictional narrative work, the heart of which sits a monologue that propels the viewer through this journey that brings together a constellation of different kinds of um, moments, some of which sit in the historical past that relates to the British colonial uh, rule in India, some of which relates to the Dutch East India Company, and then also moves to the post-independent moment in India, but is seen and pushed through the voice, by and large, of my mother, who is reflecting on all of these things as she is making her journey to England in 1966. Three days and nights mark time. A slatted window shook in a rhythm with carriages across terrain I had never seen before. So the starting point for this work was really um, a painting by Vermeer. Um, his work, Woman in Blue, reading a letter. When my family and I first arrived in the UK, I recall my mother standing in front of a window, reading letters from home, and she was weeping. Sometime later, I think most likely in as a reproduction in a book or a magazine, I came across Vermeer's painting. And it really took me to that particular moment of watching my mother weep, really, in thinking about her loved ones that she had had to leave behind in India. So often in history, it tends to be a male narrative. So it's really a work that tracks a kind of matrilineal relationship between my grandmother, my mother, and myself. It traverses time across generations and across different historical periods. Both my mother and my grandmother were displaced as a consequence of partition. I wanted to focus really on my mother's journey very specifically because to travel to the country that had really caused this violence and this, this trauma, I think is, it felt to me like a story that needed to be told. The colonization under British rule was so brutal. It affected literally every aspect of existence for Indian subjects over a very, very long time frame. I happened to come across what I think is a really important archive at the Yale Center for British art, which is part of Yale University. It's a sort of travelogue made by somebody called James Forbes, who was an Englishman traveling from England to India by ship in 1765. In a way, traveling in the opposite direction to the journey that my mother was to make some, you know, uh, 300 years later. It's almost diaristic in some ways, but it's also an account of um, 
his observations of Indian subjects, habits, you know, places, flora and fauna, the various um, products and produce catalogued and logged by the British East India Company in order that they could levy taxation on, the, on British subjects. Everything was taxed and where taxation could not be met by the subjects, the Indian subjects themselves, land was sequestrated. So what we had was settler co colonialism in effect. In between the waiting, the waiting. Some days opened up to singing. There was much talk of the paddy fields that line the Hooghly River, measured by ear, weighed, logged, taxed, packed, crated, dispatched with military precision. Every find or labor, though seemingly invisible, was measured. Jute, cotton, thread, silks, spice, tea, sugar, fruit, grains, opium, jewels, slaves. The monologue that I developed and wrote was really something that I was very keen to structure such that it was prose-like in form. That there was this sense that you felt the ocean, you know, the presence of the sea carrying you through it. So that even where you couldn't see it, through the imagination of our narrator, this movement was somehow viscerally connecting to you and pushing you through this journey. Bristol Red Lodge has quite an extraordinary history and interior space in which a key part of the film was, was shot. It's actually oak, but it, it looks like teak um, that has been carved almost to resemble a Dutch in interior space, which is interesting because, of course, that takes us right back to the time of Vermeer. Kettle Yard is, in fact, one of my favorite places. It has this extraordinary domestic feel. One thing that always slightly takes my breath away is two small Delft tiles. Dutch Delft tiles that portray um, an image of a ship, a vessel, on the water. Revisiting Vermeer's painting, this was painted at the time of the Dutch colonial expansion, which included the Dutch East India Company, making connections between finances that were extracted from India and where those ended up. And so for me, tying all of these kinds of references and how that then connected with my starting point, which was the Delft tile, was really very poignant. It seemed to trigger off a whole series of thoughts in relation to Lumen, in terms of not only thinking about my mother's story and my grandmother's story, my own history, but also to be able to tell that in the context of this terrible history of exploitation that is not something that is taught still. So it was to make a poetic work, but at the same time begin to unpick this history and to share it with, with an audience young women, and sometimes also young men, whose linen-draped bodies became transactions when hunger crept through slatted doors. And English, with pale complexions, whose own mothers were buried in churchyards, surrounded by walls and trees that offered shade to the ladies in white, starched lace. What felt really special for me to be able to bring into um, the context of Lumen was working with an amazing archive of film footage that um, 
was uh, fairly recently donated to the Brist Bristol Film Archives, taken by members of the British Raj, basically. It's particularly interesting and revealing the luxurious conditions and life that the British Raj led in India. Tennis courts, you know, well manicured lawns. It's really quite extraordinary. All meanwhile, labour was being undertaken by Indian subjects. All of these different strands, as it were, become constellations and presences within Lumen that then allow the viewer to feel that they are being navigated like a vessel in a way, or like an individual, or through this particular sort of journey. Mm -hmm.